As controller of Ketimbang, one of Behring's responsibilities was to report large tremors to his superiors in Batavia. But having no clue where the tremor had come from or what had caused it, he was unaware of the danger that lay only 23 miles out to sea. Just before midnight on the 9th of May, 1883, intense pressure building deep beneath the Earth's crust broke through the line of weakness directly below Krakatoa. Magma, moving towards the surface, split the crust apart, creating a large tremor. What the lighthouse keeper witnessed is now recognized as the first documented warning sign of the beginning of Krakatoa's 1883 eruption. In May 1883, the, the lighthouse keeper here at the, the Fourth Point Lighthouse actually saw the sea sort of go flat calm just for an instant, and he would have thought this was rather strange. Now, what he was seeing then was the result of fresh magma actually breaking rock on its way from deep down within the crust to the surface. When that happens, when the rock breaks, it generates earthquakes, and as those earthquake waves travel through the sea, they cause it to freeze, if you like. Uh, it's the same thing that you see when depth charges explode beneath the surface. And so that's what he would have seen. He would have seen the normal behavior of the waves, then they would have frozen for an instant, and then they would have carried on again. And that would have been obviously rather odd to him. To momentarily freeze the waters of the Sunda Strait required incomprehensible geological forces. After 200 years of dormancy, Krakatoa was about to wake from its slumber. In the early 1800s, the volcanic island of Krakatoa had been used by the Dutch as a penal colony. The island had also served as an outpost for naval reconnaissance. But by 1883, Krakatoa was uninhabited and only frequented by fishermen who used the surrounding waters as a rich hunting ground and the fertile jungle for timber to build their boats. But all that was about to change. days after the tremor at the lighthouse, in the early morning of the 20th of May, the tranquil island of Krakatoa burst into life. Intense pressure building beneath the most northern crater was finally released. What's happening? There, Captain. Dear God. Hold this course as best you can. The initial eruption was witnessed by people aboard a dozen ships in the Sunda Strait 
including Captain Lindemann on the Governor General Ludon. Moments after the eruption, shock waves were felt 23 miles north in Ketimbang. Minutes later, the blast was felt 83 miles away in Batavia. The shockwave was registered in Dr. Van der Stock's observatory. Among his many instruments was a magnetic declinometer fitted with floating needles that were so sensitive they detected the tiniest movements through the ground or through the air. Using the readout from the declinometer, Dr. Van der Stock deduced he was dealing with an air blast caused by an explosion nearly a hundred miles away. Did you register a tremor? Does that correlate with your instruments? It's not an earthquake. Take a look at this. The needle has been moving in a vertical plane. These vibrations are airborne. It's not coming through the ground. It's not an earthquake. Then volcanic? I think so. <laughs> At last. I've always wanted a volcano. <laughs> what do we have on the subject? But even van der Stock could not have predicted the scale of devastation Krakatoa would wreak. Because he witnessed the eruption firsthand, Captain Lindemann's log now forms a vital part of a body of information about the eruption. On the 20th of May at 10.30 in the morning, a volcanic eruption was observed on the island of Krakatoa. We saw from the island a white cumulus cloud rising fast. It rose almost vertically until after about half an hour it had reached 11,000 meters. Here it started to spread like an umbrella as it had reached the height of the westerly winds. Soon, only a small part of blue sky was seen on the horizon. This initial eruption, however, was only the prelude to a far greater explosion yet to come. Krakatoa had finally woken from its slumber. <laughs> 